firstly, what I call the short term, which is the next year to two years, what will influence the economy in the COVID era? And yes, I think the COVID era is going to last that long. And then secondly, to look further ahead, five years or so, to see what shape the post-pandemic world will take. And I think that will depend not just on how the pandemic affects the economy, but how it interacts with the other global shifts that were reshaping the world before COVID hit. If you have skills that are complementary to computers, you've done very well in this era. If you don't, you haven't. And I think those shifts were already raising huge questions. Would computers take all our jobs? Would tech, work on tech companies too powerful? And they caused quite a lot of anxiety, particularly amongst middle-class folk who didn't have so many skills to compete with computers. And I think those questions are going to be doubly important after the pandemic, because one of the big things that is happening is that this pandemic, I think, has increased and accelerated that digital shift and increase the tech giant's power. It's going to have widened inequality even further between the skilled and the unskilled. We're doing this call on Zoom, a company who's seen the demand for its product literally zoom off the charts. Similarly, companies like Amazon, Netflix, other tech giants have seen demand soaring as the digital revolution is sped up. I think Amazon's sales are up by a quarter. But on the other side, many other sectors have seen demand collapse. Travel, hospitality, physical retail, this has been the worst year, I think, in the history of aviation. The global airlines body expects revenues to fall in half. Global tourism is down 60 to 80 percent. The physical retail sector has taken a body blow, with pretty much every week a big retailer declaring bankruptcy. Economies have been shrinking at double-digit paces. It's clearly the biggest global recession since the 1930s. The IMF has called it a crisis like no other. Even if there will be a, with a recovery in the second half, which there will be, though I think it will be weaker than many people foresee, the IMF expects global output to fall by 5% this year. That's far, far bigger even than the global financial crisis. And even in the United States, which although it saw a dramatic increase in employment in June, there was a bounce back of 5 million jobs, the level of jobs is still 15 million below February. It's such a large decline that it's going to take a long time to build back that in a global pandemic, which is global by definition, that countries would be working together. That's what happened during previous pandemics. The Ebola crisis was a multilateral effort led by the United States. This time around, everything is done nationally. Indeed, the US has just said that it is leaving the World Health Organization. And instead of the world's two big economies and two big countries working together, the US and China, they're trading insults. China's been immensely aggressive in the past six months not just about refusing to accept any blame for its handling of the virus, it had a fight with Australia when Australia asked for an inquiry into COVID, but it's also become much more aggressive and authoritarian in its actions. We've seen that with the imposition of the national security law in Hong Kong, border skirmishes with India. In response, the US has slapped export controls on chip making equipment. The US may ban TikTok. Rarely have you seen superpower relations worse or less global cooperation. Even as they face a global pandemic, countries are turning inwards. So all told, I think both the machinery of the global economy and the multilateral mindset have stalled. And that's a hugely damaging development, one that I think has been sort of somewhat muffled by the degree of stimulus and support we've seen.